Maryland Turpins return from their second bye of the season and face an impossible task as they travel from Maryland cross country all the way to Oregon to face new Big Ten participants. The Oregon Ducks, that's right. Beaverton, Nike, Phil Knight, send free stuff. Maryland traveled to face the number one team in the country, the undefeated Oregon Ducks, nine and zero and Hosman Trophy candidate, Dylan Gabriel, an impossible task as the Terps look to do something they've never done before in college football, beat a number one team and beat arguably the best team in the country. They're undefeated and ranked number one for a reason. You know, I got to preview this game with you. Talk about what I think could happen. Is there any chance they could pull the upset of the millennium and somehow become one game closer to being bowl eligible? We're going to see. It's an impossible task. I'm going to give you keys to how they could possibly do it. What I'm looking forward to seeing in this game. Make sure you guys subscribe if you're new. Hit stick that like button. Stack that subscribe button. Sound off in the comment section. Leave your favorite emoji if you have nothing to say. Can Maryland do the impossible? In a year of impossible things happening throughout our world, throughout our country, can Maryland do the impossible? We do the impossible here in the Flex Zone each and every day, so make sure you guys check us out. Subscribe, hit the like button, and comment down below. But we know Maryland coming off its second bye of the season, a demoralizing, heartbreaking, pterodactyl size egg in which after that first drive where they didn't get that fourth down conversion, it was pretty much all Michigan, 48 to 23. And let's just say they put the boost to asses and they got their ass whooped up in Minnesota for their homecoming. That's what Minnesota was saying after they beat our ass for homecoming. 48 to 23 wasn't even that close. And they've lost three of the last four have the Terps. And they're trying to reach eligibility with four games left. We know Oregon. They still have Rutgers, which is probably the only winnable game left. You still have Iowa and Penn State. So there you go. <laughs> you need two. You got four left. Can you go two and two? Seems unlikely. The Ducks, Oregon, 9-0. 6-0 in their first season in the Big Ten, so the adjustment has been no problem for them. They're atop the college football ranking. They're atop the playoff ranking. And Mike Loxley knows his team is up against an impossible task. That's to travel alone. It will start at 7 p.m. Eastern, 4 p.m. Pacific, where they're at in Oregon. So an afternoon game. I'm not sure when the Terps left. I guess they're leaving today on Friday when you guys see this video. But Loxley says they have to pretty much – match up. As I told them in our call, we don't necessarily have to play above our abilities because we do have talent. We have skills that match up, but we've got to play smart. Oregon will be without a big weapon. Receiver Tez Johnson injury-wise injured his shoulder last week against their, in their 38-17 victory at Michigan. Johnson is the Ducks' leading receiver with 649 yards and eight touchdowns. He played two snaps against the Wolverine. So you hate to see guys go down, but this could help Maryland. Tez Johnson, their best receiver, not playing. But he is not out for the season, won't have surgery, and Oregon coach Dan Lanning said, I'm going to tell you the same thing I tell you. As soon as they're ready to go, we'll have him out there. So he'll probably be back maybe within a few weeks by the conference championship game. Treshawn Holden is going to replace Johnson as he is hurt pretty much. And he was ejected from the Ohio State game, and he had his best performance against Michigan <laughs> when – Johnson went down. He pretty much had, what did he have? Six catches, career high, 149 yards, and Dylan Gabriel is in the Heisman conversation. Maryland has not played a regular season game in the Pacific time zone since visiting California, Cal, in 2009. So a time adjustment is at three hours behind. We're leaving a day earlier than we typically do to give us a little more time. So they'll get there Thursday. So they got there last night, according to Loxley, and then use Friday for meetings and to acclimate. So Thursday, they got there yesterday, had a practice. So they probably got there Thursday afternoon. Thursday morning, Thursday afternoon, had a practice. 
And then Friday meetings, walk through and acclimate to the times for Saturday afternoon start. So that's good. Not leaving on Friday, leaving on Saturday. And Dylan Gabriel, as mentioned, he's one more touchdown to match the NCAA record of 178 held by Case Keenum. Ranked second in NCAA history with 144 career passing touchdowns, 17,530 yards. He's probably the leader in the clubhouse, in my opinion, up there with Ashton Genty for probably throw Cam Ward up there also from Miami. Those are probably three of the leading guys. He's completing 74.8% of his passes, best in the country, 19 touchdowns, and run for six more. As mentioned, Cam Ward, Catholic Travis Hunter, Ashton Genty. So those will be probably four of the guys invited to New York for the overall game coming up, which will be the Heisman in December. The spread was as high as 25. I believe it has dropped to 24 as of the recording of this video. Now, as I pull that up, keys for Maryland, no mental errors. You can't beat yourself. The typical things that you're going to have to do to beat number one. You can't beat yourself. You can't turn the ball over. You can't have mental communication errors. Everybody has to do their job, do their job extremely well. And as I mentioned, no penalties, no stupid penalties, no stupid, careless mistakes. And that starts with coaching. You've had another bye. You came out last week. Flat. Last time you had a bye, you came off Northwestern. You came off Northwestern. You go to Minnesota, you get trounced. It's got to be something where we get the leadership of this team and this coach. And we love Loxley. I said he doesn't have leader this year. But to come off high and have energy, they have to play. They have to start fast. They have to start fast, no mental errors, and no turnovers, no stupid penalties. Okay? That's four right there. That's four keys. Five, tough possession. You got to be Dylan Gabriel on this offense on the sideline. You got to limit their opportunities offensively because we know they're going to make plays. They're the number one team in the country. They're now 23-point favorites over under 57 and a half, so 58. I'm going to take the over. I think the Terps – I think Oregon does cover. I think Oregon is really good. Obviously, offensively, they're good, but I think defensively, they're a little underrated. I think they can get after the quarterback. You know, Maryland has struggled with the offensive line. I may be a proponent of if Billy Edwards is not playing well by the end of the first quarter. I may have a quick hook. I have the Hyder hook. I may be going to MJ Morris to see what we have in him because you want two more wins the rest of the season. If offensively, you cannot elevate, these guys are making the plays. You can't get down 14, 21 to nothing against Oregon on the road in their house where the crowd is going to be crazy, 50, 60,000 going wild. They're the number one team in the college football playoff rankings. They would get a first-round bye, be the number one overall seed, have a clear path to the national championship game. Dylan Gabriel, the Heisman Trophy winner. You can't let them start fast and get out on you. It's going to be over by the second quarter, by halftime. Like I said, I, I could see this game being 38 to – well, they gave up what? How much did they give up to Minnesota? They – as you can see, the spread, uh, they gave up, what, I mean, look at Indiana, number one, by the way, in the Big Ten with Oregon, both of them 9-0. and That's crazy to think about. But could we see a situation where the Terps can keep it close? Like I said, you got to start fast, no mental errors, no turnovers, no stupid penalties. Number five, you got to win time of possession, dominate the line of scrimmage on both sides, offensive and defensive lines, and keep Dylan Gabriel in the pocket right there. Keep Dylan Gabriel in the pocket. Number eight, limit the big plays. Number nine, you got to score over 30 points. I think you're going to have to score over 30 points, probably 31, 34. And then number 10, touchdowns in the red zone. You're going to have to match offensive intensity. You're going to have to put points on the board. Hence why I say if Billy does not provide that spark, he's done this season, but over the past few weeks, when Loxley has, since Loxley has taken over against Northwest. Then USC, I'm sorry, USC, I forgot about the homecoming miracle, 29-28. I was on here going crazy happy. They did do that. But then you rolled land egg against Minnesota, 48-23. Put up 50-plus on us. They, might. They, they really might. They may have a situation. I don't know if they're going to run up the score, if they're going to have the abs in by the fourth quarter. But I could see a situation where Oregon wins this game. 38 to 20. 
That's only 18. Does Maryland cover? I don't know. I, the, the biggest one Maryland can do is cover because they're 23 point, 24 point, 25 point, depending on which betting app you're using, underdogs, 24, 25 point underdogs. So my opinion is, like I said, you got to have the quick hook. You got to be able to say, look, if Billy Edwards isn't cutting it for us after the first or second drive and we're at, at the verge of going down double digits to this team, we have to make a change. And I think, like I said, they have to win a time possession. They have to run the football, limit Dylan Gabriel, keep him in the pocket. Don't let him run around. Don't let him get rid of the ball quickly. Make him hold the ball. Make him throw a short to the second, third, check down guy. Tackle well. No explosive plays. And you got you to gotta force some turnovers. You got to force them into some mistakes. You don't have to make mistakes. You have to force them into some mistakes. You have to force them to really give the game away because they're more talented. They're better coached. They have backups that are better than your starters. And honestly speaking, you got Oregon, you got Rutgers, you got Iowa, and you got Penn State on the road. You need two out of those four. Billy Edwards. 2,314 yards, 13 touchdowns. Roman Hemby, 403 yards, 86 carries. Ty Felton, 907 yards, six touchdowns. I think they have to find a way to win. Like I said, they have to win time of possession. I think we're going to need a big day from Roman Hemby, and we're going to also need a big day from Ty Felton. He's going to need to have over probably 150, close to 200. He's going to have to have a game like Jamar Chase had yesterday where he was running around going crazy against the Baltimore Ravens when which they did eventually pull it out, which we talked about. Check out the post game show. But the rate the excuse me, the Turks are gonna have to find a way. Oregon's without their number one receiver. We obviously saw that the guy who stepped in for him still balled out. So you may have to double him. We know the secondary problems that the Turks have had a lot of young guys, but they have had opportunities in place. They got some turnovers, got some interceptions. They're going to have to double him and not allow them to beat them beat with explosive plays. Like I said, make Dylan Gabriel hold the football. We know they want to get the ball quickly. They want to go vertically. They want to go horizontally. They want to use a lot of motion, a lot of speed, try to confuse you. Be physical. Be up on these guys. Don't give them free release. You have to jam them. You have to mix up what you do defensively. You have to bring some zone blitz. You have to play some man-to-man. -man. You have to play some single high. You may have to put two guys, like I mentioned, on their number one receiver. And Oregon can still run the football, ladies and gentlemen, because you got to count for Dylan Gabriel's legs. you got to contain them in the run game as well. You can't let them gas you. You have to make them one-dimensional. And I know I'm throwing a lot of keys to victory out there, but when you're playing number one and you're barely number 101 in the rankings of college football, to be honest with you, Maryland's not even a top 40 team right now to be honest with you. You could probably name 30 to 40 teams better than Maryland before you get to them. And that's probably damn near almost every team in the Big Ten. It just is what it is. The Maryland's not where they need to be. They have not progressed or advanced themselves this season or leveled up in the schedule. Like I said, it's going to be tougher next year. You probably have more talent, but you lose Ty Felton. You're putting all your pressure on a freshman quarterback, Malik Washington. Is the offensive line going to be better? Is Like I said, Oregon defense is underrated. They can get after the quarterback. They can play good defense. And now, like I said, that could be because they play with a lot of leads. Teams have to throw it. They can pin their areas back. Teams have to throw more, have more opportunities for turnover, strip sacks, just mistakes from you. you know, they have to throw the ball playing from behind. You have to score 30 to 35 points to be in a game with Oregon. As I look at their schedule, the most they gave up was probably – against Ohio State, the Ohio State, and that's probably the most, the closest game they've had this season. Let's see, looking at their schedule, who have they played? Idaho, Boise State, they did beat Boise State 37-34, and Boise State does have Ashton Gentry, so you got to be able to run the football. They beat Oregon State, beat UCLA, Michigan State, Ohio State, one by one, beat Purdue. So the most they've given up this season was 34 to Boise State. So they're not like I said, outside of the Boise State game, the most they gave up was, what, 31 to Ohio State, which is expected. So their defense is going to come to the party. They're going to be playing off this crowd. Hence why you have some opposition. Win the all sides. Don't beat yourself. Don't turn the ball over. Be the more physical team. Like I said, win time of possession. Run the football. Convert third down. Defensively. Pack, but no explosive plays. Get 
and force a turnover on defense, like I told, said with the Ravens. Force fumble, punch the ball out, a strip sack, an interception, knock a ball down, tip it up so someone else can come behind you and help you out. I'm not letting Dylan Gabriel beat me through the air. I'm not letting him go for three, 400 yards, four or five touchdowns, breaking all types of records, padding his highs and stats. I'm playing a lot of nickel. I'm putting a lot of speed on the field. I am mixing up my coverages. I am doubling their number one receiver. I am daring them to run the football for 200, 250 yards to beat us. I'm lightning the box. And if Oregon does that, you tip the capital. I'm not letting Dylan Gabriel put on a highlight reel NFL combine, NFL prospect compilation tape. I'm putting my speed out there. I'm putting my secondary. I'm putting more DBs on the field. I'm using some DB blitzes. I am dropping guys in the coverage. I am playing a lot of nickel. I'm really playing a lot of three, four down line, two linebackers, maybe a four, two, five, something like that, where you got five DB on the field at all times, speed, because the, the, the Terps secondary, while they may be young, maybe experienced, like I said, they have Decent ball skills, and they got some speed and athleticism. So they're going to have to be physical, going to have to be aggressive at the line of scrimmage with these Oregon defenders. And, hey, sometimes maybe giving up that 15-yard spot foul pass interference or that defensive holding may be better than giving up a 40-yard bomb over your head, a 60-yard touchdown down the field. You may have to take that out. You know what I mean? Lose the battle, but try to survive the war. And that's what it's going to be about. Can they survive the war? Can they keep close where the pressure starts to mount on Oregon? Maybe they make a mistake. Maybe a snap goes over their head. Maybe they have a crucial penalty. Maybe the Terps can get a turnover, get a big third down stop. It's This game is going to be interesting because, like I said, I think Oregon wins. Like I said, I'm going to go 38 to – I'm going to say 38-20. Maryland maybe can get 20 points. Now that would mean Maryland covers. I'm I'm a I'm gonna go out on a limb. I'm gonna be bold. I'm gonna do something different. I'm not just gonna be status quo. I'm gonna jump off a ledge. Not really a big ledge. Maybe like a sofa to the floor type of ledge. But I'm going with Maryland to cover. If it's 23, whatever sports book you're losing, 24, 25. I'm going Maryland to get the cover. And I think they lose overall because I think Oregon's just on another level. I think Oregon. Is the best team in the Big Ten right now. Will be in college football playoffs, as we know. Dylan Gabriel, probably the leader in the Heisman right now because he's had the best team. It's it's going to be imperative that, like I said, looking at this Boise State game, I forgot they played a three-point game. Let me look at the numbers real quick because I want to see what Jensie did. Because it can be, well, that's the thing. The Terps have a lot of running backs, so it doesn't even just have to be him. If they can be run for 200, 250 yards, like I said, win time of possession, because if they're winning time possession, that means they're running the ball effectively. If they can, like I said, use use MB, use Ray, use McDonald, I'd probably give each of them probably 10 carries. I'm probably giving 30 carries between the guys. And Edwards, I'm giving you another five or seven. You know what I mean? I might run the ball a lot in that game. Ashton Gentry, 25 carries, 192 yards. Obviously, the Turks don't have body on that level, but they're back up. Sear Gaines, Sire Gaines, two. Defense. I think if you can get them, if you if their weakness, you can maybe run the ball at them. You can't be afraid. Obviously, that comes down to the offensive line. But that being on the football, stay committed to the run. Like I said, keep their offense off the field, limit their possessions, limit their opportunities. Like I said, Gabriel had a fumble loss in that game, and I believe Gabriel in that game. Negative 15 yards because I think they were able to get after him a little bit. They had four sacks. So Boise State had four sacks. So they got after him. So like I said, I think there should be an opportunity for the Turks to run the football. Boise State ran it 33 times for 221. I think Maryland's going to have to be up around 30 to 35 carries if they want to be in this game. That still may not be enough. It wasn't enough for Boise State, but it kept them close in the game. And Boise State actually won the fourth quarter. It's really that Oregon won the third quarter. And that's going to be a key, too. Don't let Oregon, I know teams like Oregon, teams that had explosive offense, they use that third quarter kind of like the Warriors used to do back in the day with the NBA when they had their dynasty. They barrage you from all over. They 
hit multiple three-point shots. They get hot. They get the crowd behind you, and you're down 15, 20 points into the fourth quarter. So you're playing from behind already. Then the defense can put their ears back, force you to throw, make you one-dimensional, get turnovers, get after the quarterback. So I think Maryland covers. I'm being bold. I, they probably won't because I'm I'm usually wrong. But I think Maryland covers. I think they lose ultimately 38 to 20. They lose by 18. I'm going to say Maryland 20, Oregon 38. Don't be surprised if we see MJ Morris. I think if they do go to him, it will be a little too late that they will because I think Mike Lossie loves Billy Edwards. And I love Billy Edwards. But I think if you're in a game like this, maybe you – Prepare something that Oregon hasn't seen. You maybe prepare a package for MJ Morris. Like I said, you have three different running backs you can use. You have guys with skill skill pieces. Prather didn't mention him yet. Howard, we know about Felton. Get them the ball. Get the ball out quickly. Don't hold on to the ball. We know Oregon's going to want to come after you. Like I said, use that as an extension of your running game, the screen game, and the quick passing, the slant. Then maybe take your shots when you can and have a lighter box. But make them stop the run. Let's get that 30, 35 carries, run it right at them, make them tackle. Then you can use play action, take your shots down the field. You got the weapons to do so, and it can help your offensive line out as well. But if, they don't, if they don't, if they aren't disciplined and, and commit stupid penalties and drop the penalties and turn the ball over and, and don't convert on third down, and if they do go for fourth down, because I think Maryland's going to probably be ultra aggressive in this game because they don't have much to lose, you got four downs. Like I said, it's nothing wrong with running the football two or three straight times, getting three yards here, grinding it out, getting four yards here, getting two yards here, then having a fourth and short, a fourth and manageable, where you can prepare an opportunity for your offense to be effective. You throw everything out the window. You go balls to the wall, give everything you got, and you literally go and give it all you have. You're you're going from east to west. It's going to be a long playing ride home regardless. Do you want to come back and say, that we didn't give it all we had, and what if, what is this, what is that? They are the number one team in the country. This is your season on the line. You got four games left. You need two to become bowl eligible for the first straight game, which we haven't seen since Bobby Ross. Rossi, empower your team, motivate your team, trail your team, lead them, give them confidence, let them know there is no tomorrow. There is only today in Oregon. Forget how your season has been. Forget how you've played up until this point. What you do today in this stadium, during these next 60 minutes, during these plays, each drive will define you as a football team, as a football player, and as young men looking to change the culture of this football team and learn how to win. We know nobody's picking you. We know the world is against you, but you lock in with the guys next to you. You look to your right. You look to your left. And you look to the brother that you're in a foxhole with and you say, we're going to war today. And no matter what happens, they may be bigger, stronger, faster, more talented than us, have more NIL money, have the bigger names, have the NFL prospects, have the guys that will be playing in the college football playoff, have the Nike deal, have the wonderful uniforms. But we have a chance on this football. We've seen it this season in college football. Anything can happen. Any given Saturday. We've heard any given Sunday. Well, it's any given Saturday this season in college football, and the Terps have a chance. They're 20-plus point underdogs. The pressure's on Oregon. Make Put one hand around the neck. Put two hands around the neck. Make them show that they can handle high-pressure situations. Run the ball at their defense. Be physical. Outman them at the point of attack. Maul them. Put a hat on the ball. Swarm to the football. Like I said, Tackle well. Don't let them get consistent big plays. Make them go 10, 12, 13 plays. And you limit their opportunities offensively. You know you're going to go for fourth down? Have good play calls, Loxley. Be ready. It's four down territory. No hesitation. In special teams, do your job. Make your kicks. Let's get a big return. Switch the the, the momentum and, and change the field. Pin them deep. Make them go from the 10, the 15 yard line. Hey. You got to do it. Block one of their kicks. Limit them to field goals in the red zone. Don't let them go up and down the field. Don't get down 14, 17, 21, nothing. It's not going to help your cause. But I'm going with the Oregon Ducks to win 38, 20. I want to see maybe MJ Morris. I want to see some variety offensively. I want to see the defense playing physical and fast and playing free, finding the ball, getting the ball. And, hey, if Dylan Gabriel wants to do that read option, that RPO stuff, 
you put a hat on him. Pippa Life, somebody on the defensive line, uh, Glendon Miller, somebody needs to be hitting this guy every play and making him feel like he has a long day coming up. He's going to have to buckle up his chin strap, put his big boy pants on. He's not the biggest guy. Get your hands up defensively. Attack him. Keep him in the pocket and make him hold the ball and hit him every chance you can. Nothing illegal, but hit him and make him feel it and make them run the football to beat you. Don't let them throw the ball all around the football field. That's all I got. Make sure you subscribe if you're new. Hit stick that like button. Sound off below. Hit that bell. Leave your favorite emoji. It helps us out tremendously. Hit the like button if you made it this far. Let me know about the speech. Are you motivated? Do you feel like you're going to run through a wall and can the Terps beat Oregon? This will be the upset of all upsets. Biggest upset in Maryland football history. We'll see what happens. God's favorite host. Stay tuned. Maryland football looking to get bowl eligible. Need two more wins. Four games left. Impossible to at Oregon. We'll be here. Hit the like button. Subscribe. Sound off below. Do the Terps have a chance? I don't know. I have them covered. So maybe that's a win in its own right. 3820. We'll see what happens. I'll see you on the next video. And the game is at 7 p.m. Big Ten Network. And we'll be here on the Flex Zone. Only place giving you Turks coverage how you want to when you need it. Have a good Friday, guys. I'll see you and talk to you then.